Greetings, all that's narrative, that they are I, D-I-F, and this is its field. We understand that we have a query relating human collective consciousness, history that is embedded within that collective consciousness, and the energy that is surrounding the entirety of the Earth collective format of consciousness. But before diving into these queries, two things that we wish to express. The first, above and beyond all things that are expressed within this day, to know, feel, and to perceive that you are loved in our perspective is of the utmost importance. Secondly, it is our greatest excitement and within that same great excitement in which we co-create with you, not only in this moment, but through all moments of your linear time perspective. So, of course, first, diving into the human Earth collective consciousness and the history that is embedded within that collective format of consciousness. First, where did human beings start? Now, of course, to that human perspective, this will greatly depend upon what you perceive as a human collective consciousness, the energy that existed to create a physicality of the souls existed at the spawn of the universe itself. At the time of creation of the universe's physical attributes, the consciousness existed much longer than that universal collective. In fact, all consciousness that created the entire universal collective that we are within has been omnipresent, has been omnifold and connected to the construct of consciousness for eternity. There's no time limits within that construct. The fractalization that created the universe itself in a physical sense is an entirely separate form of energy. But the consciousness behind has been through limitless amounts universal conscious co-creations. And after the end of one cycle of being a universe, as humans would perceive through linear time frame, from the birth of a universe to the death of that universe, these cycles have been in this, the incarnation of the universal collective form without physical form altogether. And of course, this universal collective consciousness galaxy in which we inhabit with you is not an original galaxy from the birth of this universe. There have been multiple galactic collective conscious cycles that were within the incarnation of an entire form of galaxy. Smaller galaxies have merged. Galaxies have been broken apart. And what we create in this moment is a new permanent form of galaxy from the human linear time perspective, of course, measuring the entire structure in billions of years would not allow most humans to understand the frame reference of time. Now, what most humans can perceive, factoid in fact that we have summoned through Rob's own perspective, if you utilize the construct of one million, this is a construct that humans are able to perceive well. Imagine to yourself counting to one million per second. And how many seconds would it create for there to be one million years? That is 11 days of your time. Now, count to one billion with integrate seconds, and that will take you 32 years. So from 11 days to 32 years is a difference from 1 million, which most of you can barely perceive, to 1 billion. And the numbers that are outside of the trillions, quadrillions, and multiple hundreds of billions framed with squares and multiple incarnates of that energy are far beyond the reach of the human mind to perceive the radical forms of numbers in which Times have been created, universes in which experience of years had gone by before this galaxy existed, and the planet itself, very new and fresh entity, a monster, 
the galaxy that exists in this time. So let us start with Earth. Earth has been incarnated, as Robert expressed, through multitudes of incarnation cycles before humans alone. But what is the beginning of human? Humans once were second density entities that created a form of consciousness through the non-physical layers that created an existent animal form. But before this, these entities were bacterial and viral forms, and before this, first density building blocks of creation, that what you see is non-living. Now, adding all of your consciousness and all of the constructs of evolution, imagine yourself within the construct of the past form of Bigfoot in your mind, Sasquatch entities. These were the ancestors that the Anunnaki first met in the iteration of your DNA change. Once the Anunnaki found Earth and found a species that was worth manipulating the forms of DNA, then you became that form of new human. And this human's DNA was changed through several iterations, perceiving the consciousness that of the Anunnaki alone there were multiple iterations of times in which they came, inhabiting the Earth for one million years, 2.4 millions of years, back to hundreds of thousands of years through multiple layers of iterations, and all there upon Earth changing the DNA of the human consciousness at their whim, at their leisure, for the design that they decided to create. And of course, after they left, the second iteration before coming back into the third, then the Elohim comes to earth, sees this changed human, and expresses, I desire to add upon that change. The Elohim understood who the Anunnaki were, understood their capacity to shift and change DNA. Now, of course, after this, there were several Pleiadian races that came to earth, and that which was fifth density humanoid form shifted and changed the DNA again seven different times in massive form changes. Now, of course, each of these seven can be broken further into multiple hundreds, if not thousands of tweaks and thousands of iterations of change. But seven major components of the DNA shifted. And from that seven, different iterations came, 12 forms of DNA. Of course, as you perceive this construct, five, the seven, were hybridized beings themselves, such as that of the Anunnaki, who were not reptilian, who were not humanoid, but were Pleiadian and reptilian mixture. Of course, giving their own DNA gave portions of draconian DNA and portions of the feminine Pleiadian humanoid race. One iteration created two forms of DNA that was given to the human collective consciousness. Other beings that came in, such as that of the Syrian and Pleiadian hybridized consciousness, were able to co-create with humans, to teach humans, and certain portions of their own DNA were to tweak that of either the Syrian or Pleiadian, both. All of the races that you have understood and heard have a high probability of being a race that worked with human components of genetics and shifted and altered that DNA as well. Now, through the course of history, being expressed as to speak to the construct of this alone and compress your said history into a 40 to 60 minute iteration, as you understand is nearly impossible, as simply the consciousness behind humans are, simply for the last 100 years could never be compressed within a 10 hour time frame what has been experienced in the last 1,000 years could never be expressed within 100-year frame. 
so many moving components of the human consciousness do to the population of humans and to the energetic spectrum of humans. Now, if we were to share with you, raise that emotional and mental spectrum were one one hundredth of a human being, we could share that energy in a much quicker fashion as it does not deviate from moment to moment, year to year, decade to decade, so violently and so drastically as it were. But that experience of the large spectrum comes, the large portions and areas in which we must choose to come from. So of course, after the iteration of your fourth iteration, and at that time, holding three of the 50% hybrids, meaning six forms of DNA and one that was, or back of better terms, the pure form of DNA was given to humans. This is where a great deal of entities started fluxing their own traffic of consciousness in to create with human collective form. You see much of what humans once were in your ancient text, your biblical text speaks of humans that live seven to nine hundred years on a regular basis. Was this miscategorization? Was this a mistranslation? No. Although there are many of these terms that are misinterpreted, mistranslated, misrepresented intentionally. The years and times in which these entities existed were in fact measured within multiple hundreds and in some cases thousands of years. But this iteration with seven forms of DNA within their cells and that energy, fifth iteration comes and experience these entities integrating into the Earth Collective. Why did this occur? Just as in your moment now, where humans do not have open contact, this is due to the resistance of the human collective in whole. Most human entities would be too fearful of co-creating in that way for type 1 beings to come into your planet, meaning that the only beings that are left to enter the atmosphere of the human collective consciousness is that of type two who do not care about infringing upon your free will. And as some of you are able to imagine, this does not always bring the best characteristics of consciousness embedded into entities into your own co-creative sphere. It in fact brings entities who would suppress the amount of your free will at possible. And because the human collective is fearful of that co-creation, you do not have entities walking on your planets, co-creating directly in a physical form with your human collective. But in this time, the door was wide open for many entities of type 1 and type 2 varieties to visit and co-create because humans saw these entities as their gods, as their teachers as the entities who would bring them knowledge from the sky. And it was widely accepted and understood that this is a common occurrence. So in this time, humans worked with multiple dozens of different forms of races. And we understand we had shared some form of your history where the Mohbrata was written <laughs> and all of the Hindu forms of text and some forms of Buddhist text, which describe the consciousness of physical entities that were working with humans directly, some that were manipulating full praise of humans, others that would share the gifts of knowledge and power, technology, etc. And in this time, wars were had between the extraterrestrial races. Now, of course, this created a great form of resistance amongst humans and a great deal of resistance in that in which they co-created with. One of the major components of this co-creation was that the draconian consciousness was not near Earth at that time. 
they still held a great deal of co-creation with the higher layers of that of the earth reptilian consciousness but did not integrate deeply or care much for the human co-creator collective their own family one that their genetic coding was gifted to that of the earth reptilians they were fine they were not being harmed in that way their technology kept them alive and thriving despite the wars above the surface and of course they did not come back into that earth expression so left to their own devices the reptilian beings upon earth rarely intervened or co-created with humans at that time but of course the other races went to war causing great devastation and death upon the human collective consciousness cities were sunk into the ocean cities were evaporated through technology and of course the wars took lives of those that were extraterrestrial from your perspective <clears throat> now in that time frame there was a great deal of devastation that did occur to the surface of the earth and many of the races that were fighting with one another came to a conclusion that it was best not to involve humans otherwise it could erase the population there was a loose agreement and many left but many did not leave at that moment the ones who stayed were those who would form manipulation over these newer creatures that were long living and intelligent but not intelligent enough to perceive the manipulation that they were receiving at this time a race of beings that were known as the Totini came into the earth collective consciousness with partners that they had worked with insectoid consciousness and these forms of insectoids started war with the reptilians upon earth the earth reptilians were coming to the surface regularly in some ways working with humans on the faction of that which was as all earth is a spectrum a positive versus negative as humans would perceive all that which are benevolent and those more malevolent and benevolent earth reptilians worked to help humans and malevolent either did not care or would utilize same forms of suppression the insectoid race came to the earth started perceiving these reptilians and went into the ground and started killing many of them with that death came back the draconian consciousness to defend their children and destroyed all of the races that were left upon earth keeping only alive the human consciousness and that of the earth reptilian beings and at that moment placed a finite version of a no zone this means that no entities were allowed to come to earth without either their permission or without their suggestion in that way and at this time the great suppression of human contact for the majority was over on a larger scale now of course draconian consciousness need not care greatly for human beings but did in fact perceive that humans held components of their own dna through that which was taken and stolen by that of another race that gave that draconian dna to the onunaki this was one portion that was integrated and then a portion from the reptilian earth consciousness which was another portion of draconian they looked at these humanoids with great pity and said although these are not our family and are not perhaps as you would see worthy of our dna they do in fact hold some form of our dna and we will let them be to their own devices knowing that they had already taught their children as they perceived in their own eyes the earth reptilians the ability to manipulate any human that they desired if need be so of course the draconians creating a quarantine for the earth began 
and races were able to come and go from earth with permission or those that would sneak in and thus those that desired to work with humans started opening the telepathic forms of communication with humans. The Syrian entities, the Octurian entities, the Pleiadian entities, and even those that are the Andromedan entities started working with their telepathy and working with those more advanced forms of humans. This created a cycle which was open. Many entities were already taught psychic development, but changes in their DNA brought them away from that psychic energy and more so to the mental bodies and the more reptilian-esque forms of their DNA mental body. And with a humanoid physical archetype and many humanoid energies inside of their DNA, of course, the body would not be able to work with telepathy as a native reptilian archetype physical body would. The mental body of the reptilian consciousness itself is very capable of telepathy, but in a human body would not work as well. So the humanoids had to work on finding their telepathy abilities through their humanoid counterparts who were able to focus their telepathy upon Earth and some races physically did occur and shared this information with humans directly. How to work with their telepathy. Many of you see this in the archives of your Mayan ancestors and see this in the archives of your Native American ancestors. Even those that came from insectoid and races worked with humanoids and earth reptilians alike. <clears throat> I was skipping through several tens of thousands of years in your history. We go to the more modern portions of your Earth history. We go into the form of approximately 800 BC, into the time frame of 300 BC. There were entities that were still working on more silent levels with larger collectives of humans those that were the Greek, those that were the Indian race, and those that were Chinese in that way, integrated more so with beings that brought in stealth versions of information and communication and were able to bolster their version and areas of humans into a higher mind, higher technological form. This is where you saw Races that worked with the gods of the Greeks, Zeus, and all of these entities that were underneath the entity that was Zeus were in fact extra dimensional and extraterrestrial beings working either in telepathic or physical forms, teaching the Greeks onto the year approximately 300 BC region. This is where the energy shifted towards the Alexander the Great construct. And of course, Alexander took their armies out into the world and conquered, bringing the unified form in their own perspective of bringing great knowledge and technology to the world and unifying as one human race. But of course, the other races that worked with Persians, the other races that worked with Indians, although India being a large area had several different factions of races working, that is why it was a more divided country with many forms of kings in small territories rather than that in the European region where the land was more compressed and larger scales of land were held by one ruler and brought the silver shields, which were the ships of technology, into the wars. And when they came to India, they had met multiple races that were more technologically advanced than those of the Greeks' extraterrestrial counterparts. That is why they could not advance beyond the Gamji. And you see this repeating in history 
as Christopher Columbus crossed the ocean and saw ships hovering over water, the lights that were over area in the direction of land. This was the race of their gods, showing them where the next area of conquest was. Still, out of degree, entities found a way to fight their personal wars with other extraterrestrial races through human means, by proxy utilizing humans for the army that would fight the war. If thousands of ships were to descend upon Earth, the Draconians would be alerted immediately and destroy all of these entities, as the Draconians were now the protectors of humans in a roundabout way. Now, of course, the entities and battled all found purpose, all found forms of specific iterations and manipulations, but humans' desires internally, humans' thoughts about the history in which they had gone through, thoughts and belief systems about the history that they read, formed the opinion and energy calls towards whether or not they should desire the gods to come back. And of course, with the history as violent as humans, with the manipulation that was formed with that humans, many humans said no to the gods, no to the multiple gods that would rain war physically upon earth, and many of those that took on the monotheistic form of one god from Jerusalem, and the one god through Christianity saw this as an opportunity to have one protector for the realm. And with that mindset, religious ideology that was behind that mindset, held a great deal of humans back from desiring any form of god but their own. And with the multi-god system of paganism and Hinduism brought about many entities despising the other gods as reading inaccurate forms of text of their history, perceiving that many of their own internal gods were at war with one another, and albeit many were, not all. And these divisionary lines of the way that gods were perceived started becoming telltale sign only for acceptance of one or one small faction of gods, leaving out the desire to perceive any other gods before them. Now, of course, as all of you understand, these were not gods. These were simply entities who existed at higher consciousness levels in integrative form, who existed at higher levels of experience and higher levels of technology. And they appeared as gods. And your human form today, many of the races that work in higher dimensional format and bring down their consciousness into your own vibration and dimensional level would appear to God as you now. The indistinguishment between that form of technology and that which is divine intervention is blurred quite easily with your predisposal of praising entities and be religious constructs. So, of course, we have covered nearly one infinitesimal spectrum of one thousandth of a percentage of one fraction of your history, but we'll take queries at your leisure. You had mentioned that there are current belief systems in place that the collective has now that prevents these beings from essentially walking among us. But certainly their interest and participation in our reality hasn't waned at all. How are they interacting now? Are they working through human beings in, in, in entirely, or are there other ways that they do this? Yes, of course. The ways that entities work with the human collective consciousness now varies as much as the consciousness of the human collective itself. You understand the dividing lines that you call countries, and within those countries, the territory states, each of these having their own perspective about the world, about life, about certain gods, etc. <clears throat> so in that way, Human beings are working in telepathic forms. Some humans are working in physical forms. Those humans who work 
with the more malevolent forms of those that are earth reptilians or those that work as draconian consciousness and telepathic forms may have more direct experiences in a physical sense in one form or another yet to have the grey entities who work in hybridization and then the other races who work in hybridization some with authorization from that of draconian consciousness others that are sneaking in at times in which they are able but either of these expressions are conditional to the entities themselves that are co-creating and the greater experience and of course hybridization upon one level is experienced through higher dimensionality itself there are very rare components of hybridization that occurs with the physical form of human body although it can spill over in that way what is really preventing any one of these races from shall we say pulling the curtain back now in the interest of those that are draconian in consciousness the interest of those that are more malevolent variety of entities there are many reasons why they would not create an allowance of entities to exist within that co-creative sphere but the human collective ultimately decides that way if all humans desire to shift into a reality where they desire to open contact and free-flowing experiences, then of course they would not be blocked from having that experience fully, and the entities that work with humans would be able to co-create much quicker. Now some races such as ourselves would never come into the earth collective consciousness physically unless there was an absolute acceptance for the desire to co-create and many of those that are type 1 are in the similar veins yet those that are highly benevolent and type 2 entities would work with humans if they were allowed to work with humans from the draconian construct or if enough humans were to open their consciousness for that, it would give the opportunity for this race to bypass that energy of the draconian consciousness. What ties human consciousness to draconian consciousness is the energy of fear itself and the energy of fearing control itself. All right, so when you say the human collective would have to decide, presumably this would be done unconsciously or subconsciously in the dream state, presumably from what you've taught us in the past, this is where human collective, the human collective comes to sort of decide the direction that it's going is in this uh, dream framework. Is that correct? Yes, of course, in the astral state and dream state, but even through the conscious awareness of Earth itself, although most humans would not allow themselves to go into those areas of energy, then of course, the dream and astral projected states could be the most dominant places to work out the resistances and beliefs. But if the human collective consciousness utilized a tool, whether it be the 10 step belief system process or whether it be a self designed and designated tool, could consciously work for that effort as well. As a collective, as the human race are there certain things that we actually have grown past that we've avoided what have we achieved basically as a collective yes of course as a collective you start achieving each thing individually as it comes but of course just as in your physical human life you may achieve one thing in one moment and release it in the next and revert back now of course all the progression of earth consciousness since you have shifted from your third density to fourth density exchange and as humans are actively working whether known or not towards the construct of that which is fourth density the earth vibration fraction and the scale of projection are going forward and upwards and have not slowed or stopped since that time so of course from the 2003 years to your present time you are still growing and expressing the construct to grow this is why you've seen a radical or lack of better terms heightening 
the fearful forms of experiences in your Earth Collective to try as an assistant to counteract that consciousness raising as not only the entities that you would perceive as malevolent or evil are not also actively working towards this degree, but the human collective must find a counterbalance to its spectrum, meaning that even if there were no malevolent entities in the universe, even if there were no malevolent entities as humans that were actively working towards fear and regression of the human collective format, <laughs> the human energy itself, as it is steeped in a spectrum so vastly different from high malevolence to high benevolence, any form of benevolent action would be suppressed against in a form of pushing. We do not mean suppressed as in a full suppression of that form, but what we mean is a counterbalance in order to fight that upgoing energy. What does all energy try to do within itself, understanding the nature of your physics? It tries to work for the neutrality of that form of energy, either creating a steady flow of positive energy to flow, creating an energy that is able to be released without resistance or to find perfect neutrality. So as the energy for your dimensionality and collective goes upwards, there will always be a natural form of ability collective form trying to hold down that energy to create neutrality, to create a negative area of energy to be dumped, or to fight and lose against that positive energy that is going upwards. And of course, as you are aware, we do not perceive that constructs through the means of these words, negative and positive, but they are the best words that humans can understand to describe the formats of energy that the human collective holds, and that is at play with your collective. Okay, well, we've certainly spent some time talking about uh, malevolent beings, but let's shift for a second. Who out there, what races or what entities really have our back? Who is on team human being, as it were, and why? Yes, this is depending upon what you see as the human side. Those that are Octurian, those that are Pleiadian, may have best interest for your consciousness. Now, of course, both of these being a blanket term and many races existing within the Octurian collective and many races existing in the Pleiadian, for the most part, humans will perceive that. Yet, these entities may desire to take your free will if they are type 2. As you have expressed, nuclear war is a possibility of the Earth Collective. Yet there have been active Syrian and Pleiadian ships that disarm nuclear weapons. Now, some of you perceive this as a highly good thing, of course. It protects you. Yet some humans will perceive any interference is non-worthy. If humans desire to wipe themselves out, that must be allowed. So, of course, some of you will perceive it as good, some of it will perceive it as bad. <laughs> the same that is expressed with the opposite spectrum. Those that are most malevolent from your perspective being draconian consciousness, many of you will perceive them as evil <laughs> and negative, as they would prevent other races from entering, as they feed from the fears of human consciousness. Yet others perceive them as those willing to protect the Earth consciousness. So there's a great and drastic difference in the change of the energies that persist in the way that you perceive. In our own perspective, Earth and humans hold the greatest interest for themselves, as you are all intimately involved and have the most to gain or lose by the awareness of yourself and the awareness of the version of reality you are choosing to be a part of. What about periods in human history, you know, contemporary times, relatively contemporary, where there's been like a renaissance, a resurgence in great art or music, where it just seems like society is advancing very rapidly. How much of that is human beings working on in the collective, or at times when various people around the globe will all have the same idea for the same technological invention. How much of that is planted and how much of it springs organically from human beings? 
all of that has to do with the human collective consciousness, although there may be an iteration where another race of beings would give an idea to one human. It is that collective grid that connects all humans that allows your 100th monkey effect to take hold. It is the grid system and the earth grounding system that allows humans to perceive from one another the accomplishments of a desire to greatly expand what human consciousness is. And of course, your resurgence of technology in the last 35 to 40 years came from an experience of extra dimensional, turning to extraterrestrial, turning to earth human technology and reverting and back designing these constructs. But of course, the original intention in the human must be there in order to understand the nature of that technology to break down that technology, to desire so greatly an advancement in humans that they are willing to co-create and connect that energy forward. How much longer do you think before we are actually a, a space-faring civilization? Or are we already? Yes, of course. We'll share with you that in the human collective, the idea of energy, of leaving your Earth, going to other planets and sustaining yourself and by yourself is that of a fourth density trait. There cannot be an excursion from your Earth collective in a collective sense unless your consciousness holds to one another and accepts one another. That is what the fourth density is, a heart-to-heart -heart connection, an energy that expresses full forms of connection and a form of unity in collective consciousness. Without that, spacefaring is not an entire collective thing. Now, of course, there are individuals that are in your collective that have achieved these forms, simple trips and stations that are within the moon, Mars, etc. But these are done so with the assistance of extraterrestrial entities and not done so from the human compartmentalization of their own consciousness by themselves. And although the Earth Collective is expressing that energy in one small minute fashion, it does not mean the energy of the Earth Collective formed that energy because it is being suppressed from the forms of collective. It means it is not truly a part of the collective consciousness, only a small percentage and a speck of dirt, for lack of better terms, amongst the ocean of sand within your planet of consciousness that is capable of experiencing that energy. And of course, even the forms of militaries that are within your planet are at minimally 1.5 to 2.5 decades ahead of your own understanding of technology. Yet due to the nature of those very few humans who have access to this, it is not integrated. The same can be expressed with your health systems. Those who have forms of medications and regenerative sciences that have not been placed in your collective consciousness and are only privy to a very small degree of human consciousness. All of these are part of your human desire and have been achieved upon your Earth collective, but are not a part of that collective. So it seems to me that we're at a point where technology is developing so quickly that it is only just barely out of the reach of the collective to do these things, not by much at all. Yes, of course. And this is said to be true with all things within your Earth Collective. Because there are humans privy to that energy, it makes it near the point of collective co-creationalism. But due to the nature of that excitement of human beings, that energy will be propelled at a much higher rate in the collective energy. What do we have to look forward to as a collective in the immediacy of now? Yes, in the immediacy of now, it is similar to the trajectory that all of you have been upon. Many of you are finding internal technology to work with in the aspects of healing your consciousness and healing your physical body. Many entities are learning the internal technology 
that will help assist the expansion of external forms of technology. Many of you are working upon the central nature of your own consciousness in order to be human that you desire to be and share that humanness with others. So, of course, the energy in your immediate vicinity is the more that you focus upon that which you desire the most that you focus upon, which you are accelerating your own understanding of the world and yourself, the more that you will see expressed in that direct environment next to you. All of you are fourth density consciousness, but of course you are experiencing your third density experience until all of you desire not to experience that any longer. And as you are growing in your individual creatorships, each of you have that opportunity to peek forward into your fourth density expression that is in the immediate vicinity for all of you who are co-creating with us in this moment and all of you are outside of that co-creative sphere will be vibrationally taught by those that are learning that energy and are able to create it forward in that energetic co-creation we wish to express to all of you as you are aware, our time for this day has come to its end, but before disconnecting, we should express that which we have already expressed many times in your collective. But as you are growing through our conversations, we are sharing the parts of your own energy that we have never perceived before. And as we reflect that energy into your consciousness, it gives you the opportunity to grow and expand within yourself. And because you are growing, we are growing too. We congratulate all of you for the growth that you have had. And of course, we thank you for the growth that you have given us. We wish to bid all of you adieu for this evening.